Hello everyone, my name is Halvi. In this video, we'll be going over the history of the arena in Fire Emblem games. So arenas were first introduced in FE1 and have been present in most Fire Emblem games since then. There are only a few games that they are not in, being Fire Emblem Gaiden and Echoes, the two Tellius games, Path of Radiance and Radiant Dawn, and also Awakening. So in most games, arenas are places where the players can earn extra experience and gold for their units. The more traditional arenas that were first introduced in FE1 are usually located in certain maps and they're just like tiles on those maps. And what you would do is put one of your combat capable units onto the arena tile and enter the arena. So units like bards and clerics cannot enter the arena. But then once you enter the arena, you'll be offered a wager. And if you accept the wager, then you will enter into combat with an opponent and if you win the fight you get experience and you win the wager so you get gold but if you lose the fight, then you lose your gold and your unit's life. Although in most traditional arenas, you can end the fight early by pressing B usually if you think you're going to lose. In that case, you forfeit your gold, but you save your unit's life in return. But the battles in the arena work the same way as a normal battle. The player unit will attack first and then they'll just trade blows between the player unit and the opponent until one has been defeated or you have have forfeited the match or possibly if both units find themselves unable to damage each other and also the amount wagered is what affects the difficulty of the fight so usually with a higher wager you can expect a more difficult opponent and also the lower the wager the easier the fight should be so I have the most experience probably with the GBA arenas and more specifically FE7's arenas and a good rule that I like to to follow is that usually anything over the wager of 800 gold is probably not worth accepting as the opponent will be pretty strong and you're likely to just have to cancel the fight and just lose your gold that way but it also has to depend on the units that you are entering the arena with I've noticed that lower wagers in the like six seven hundred range you'll probably see a lot of magic users like mages and shamans and depending on on the unit you're entering with whether they have good resistance or not or you know they could get two shots by a magic user usually though I always think that any wager that's in the 600s to low 700s should always be a pretty good bet that you'll win the fight no matter what it is that they throw at you and also a good trick is that once you enter the arena and you're offered your wager if you don't like it you can just press b and then enter the arena again and you'll be offered a different amount for your wager and i usually do that a lot whenever i do any arena fighting sometimes it could take a lot of tries to get that good wager that you want like if you see any wager that's like over a thousand gold or something do not enter that fight because there's a good chance that you can just get two shot or you know something like that and not even or or like one round like it's possible that you can get enter the arena and like not even get a chance to forfeit before you die like you could literally get one rounded in the arena. It's very possible if you accept those very, very high, like over a thousand gold wagers. But that's from my experience because arena grinding can be pretty fun sometimes. If you would happen to just want to grind up a unit that may be just for fun. And not to mention if you do arena grind for, you know, however long it takes to grind up a unit to wherever you want to get them like 10, 15, levels or so to get them ready for promotion or something like that it's a good way to also get experience for your healer so even though a healer like a cleric cannot enter the arena they will still be getting experience for healing your arena fighter that you're you know training in the arena since the unit that's entering the arena will not get healed if they win or forfeit or whatever so you'll need a healer on standby to heal them up if you are going to train a unit in the arena so now 
let's take a look at how arenas work in each game, starting with FE1, where they were first introduced. So the arenas in this game set the standard for what arenas will be like in most of the games that came afterwards. You'll move your units on top of the arena tile, have them enter it, and then you'll be offered your wager. Accepting the wager puts you straight into a battle, and in this game, there is no option to yield or end the fight early. Once you accept, you're in the fight until it ends, whether you win or die. And also in this game, you will use whatever weapon that your unit has equipped. So for example, as you can see here, Merrick has Excalibur equipped and he is using that in the arena and it's also using up his weapon like uses and stuff. So that is very unlike the arenas in other games. So here I'm going to equip the freeze spell and then enter the next arena battle and he will be using the freeze spell now instead of the Excalibur. So in that way, arenas could be actually like easier in this game compared to others, no matter what the wager amount is, since you can use more powerful weapons and you're also rewarded with a lot more gold than usual in this game as well. Now we're skipping over FE2 since arenas were not in that game and moving on to FE3 where arenas returned and work pretty much the same way, although there were quite a few changes made. One being you're just given a basic weapon like an iron weapon for fights you're not using your units equipped weapon anymore fe3 also introduced the option to yield and end the fight early by pressing b if you got a bad feeling that your unit's gonna die or something and i've also noticed that the game will throw pretty strong enemies at you with very strong weapons possibly even and here i was also able to showcase that taking wagers that are very high is not a very good idea as you can see see here I was offered a wager of 1030 gold and look who they set me up against a steel sword hero against my Katria who isn't even a promoted unit yet and here you can see that in the arena you can just get one rounded and just die and I had no chance of ending the fight early even if I press B right away I mean one round hasn't even gone you know past yet so you can get very unlucky if you take those higher wagers and I even get insulted and get called an idiot for you know taking the high wager I guess because I had no option to uh, yield there. Next in FE4 Arena saw a pretty drastic change mostly just due to all the other drastic changes that were made in this game and just how this game works so instead of being a tile on the map in this game arenas must be accessed through a castle also, your units will not die permanently if they are defeated in the arena. Instead, they will just be left with 1 HP after the fight. And then another change is that each arena is specific to that chapter, and there are only a certain amount of fights that you can do in the arena in each chapter. So each chapter there are seven predetermined enemies that you can fight and you can think of them as levels. You know the first one will be like a level one enemy and be very weak and then they'll just get stronger and stronger all the way up to the last enemy. The seventh enemy in the arena will be the most difficult one of course and be very difficult to defeat and your units can attempt the arena as many times as they want. There is no cost of gold to enter or anything like that but you do get rewarded with gold after you defeat each enemy as you work your way up and if you win all seven fights your unit can win a total of 17,500 gold per chapter so if you enter the arena and lose the fight then if you re-enter and fight again since you lost you'll still only have one hp so it'll be even more difficult to win that fight now so you can get healed up though inside like your home castle if your healer's in there with you or you could also just come back to the arena at a later point in the map and try again so like something you could do is like try with all your units to see how far they can get in the arena at the start of the map and then later like towards the end of the map or at like the end of the map before you seize the final castle you can go back and send all your units through the arena if they haven't cleared it yet and see how far they can get this time because it is experience and gold you're missing out on if you don't do the arenas as much as you can during the map. 
and a unit's progress in the arena for each chapter will be in their like stat screen as an arena level stat and that is reset at the end of each chapter you also get to choose to bring whatever weapon you want into the arena and you also get a look at your opponent as well so you can set yourself up so that if you have a weapon triangle advantage or disadvantage you can like change your weapon around to give yourself an advantage in battle of course if your unit has options like that they can use multiple weapons or whatever i really like the arena system in fe4 it gives you something to do at the start of each map as you're doing your preparations and you can get some extra levels and experience on your units before you even start the map you have pretty much all the time in the world the only downside is that if you do lose a fight and can't seem to win your unit will be left with one hp once you bring them outside of the castle and start the map but that gives your healer something to do so it's maybe not not all that bad and one more thing i didn't mention is that if you do win a fight in the arena you are fully healed after that fight the arenas in fe5 return to the more traditional style as seen in fe3 also in this game you could be given a steel weapon over like an iron weapon and your unit fighting in the arena will still have bonuses from like supports and authority and charm and also the one drawback in this game is that the arena will increase your unit's fatigue levels so if you want to grind a unit in the arena you will just have to probably deal with the fact they will be too fatigued to participate in the next chapter unless you have a stamina drink for them or something moving on to the gba era fe6 7 and 8 all have arenas and for the most part they are very similar to that of fe5 and fe3 in fe6 only though support bonuses are in effect for units entering the arena however that was removed for fe7 and 8 in fe7 nils and ninjins ring dances can be abused in the arena in a certain way i think you have to dance and give the buff to the unit that you want to enter the arena with and then have them fight in the arena and then i believe if you rescue them the effect will not like decrease each turn so as long as you have them rescued as you end your turn and then the next turn you could drop them and then dance for them have them enter the arena and then just keep doing that over and over like you rescue them after they did the arena and you can keep that buff on them for as many turns as you want i believe that's how it works so usually you'll just want to use the ring that buffs their defense by 10 and the should be able to just win any fight in the arena that they come across in fe8 some things to note are that arenas are only accessible during the actual map like during the chapter itself if you were to go to a map that has an arena but you're entering it through a skirmish then the arena will not be accessible in that way and arenas are not accessible from the world map like armories and shops are also in the gba games there's a little bit of a exploit that you can do because after you accept your wager you're given a preview of your opponent and just before entering the arena then you can solve soft reset and then after soft resetting you may face a different enemy so you can kind of avoid bad matchups in this way so then we skip over fe9 and 10 since they do not have arenas and then that brings us to fe11 and 12 and since they are remakes of fe1 and 3 they have arenas that are similar to their respective games although what is unique to these two games is that you can use the arena multiple times in the same turn as you win each fight however this is extremely risky as you are not healed after each fight and on top of that you're only offered one wager and it's most likely going to be a higher wager than the one you just fought and that means your opponent will be stronger in fe11 here i was able to get on a pretty good streak where Ogma fought a pirate and did not get hit 
fights, so he had his full health still after he won the fight. So he was offered another round, and I accepted it. And then I got into a fight with a fighter, and then I won again. So even though I was on 1 HP, I just accepted the next wager anyway. And of course, it was a mercenary that was just going to kill me in one shot anyway. But I just did this for this video purposes only, so I really didn't care. And Ogma died. Also, another thing apparently about these two games is that arena battles are capped at six rounds of combat and if both fighters are alive by the end of six rounds of combat then it will just be a draw and the wager will not be charged and the fight will just end with your unit sustaining any damage that they had. I was not able to get this to happen though in my gameplay. Also in FE12 there are the training grounds which are similar to arenas. The difference being you pay your fee it's not a wager because you're not going to get any gold back if you win the fight but in exchange for that you do get to check out the enemy stats that you'll be fighting and you can pretty much work out how the fight will play out like in your head before even accepting to pay the fee so this you can truly think of as like buying experience for your units because if you take a look at the stats and you know you can see that it's likely that you won't win then you can just say no and you know come back and they'll offer you a new price and a new fighter also you bring in whatever weapon you want to on your unit so you want to bring in a strong weapon so you have better chances of winning so i played around with this a little bit and here you can see julian i gave him a steel sword so he'll do more damage and he was offered 710 gold to fight this Myrmidon with an iron sword and just looking at the combat forecast it should be obvious that he should win the fight I mean he two shots the opponent and the opponent uh what is that like nine shots Julian so even though Julian has an 86 percent hit chance versus a 98 for the opponent I mean Julian should easily be able to get two shots on the guy before the Myrmidon gets nine shots on Julian so I mean this is a easy win you know you look at it and you can see that experience there at the bottom where it says 32 that is the experience that Julian will be getting so it's basically you look at it you're paying 710 gold to get 32 experience on Julian I mean that's almost a third of a level up you know it's a pretty good uh deal i'd say so we go ahead and take it and obviously julian's gonna win so then right away you'll get offered another fight you can see that it says chain there at the bottom basically you just want to keep winning fight after fight after fight and you'll just get more experience although the opponents will be tougher as you go on and once you like enter and start this a chain of fights you can't like back out and change your weapon or anything like that you're like you just have to keep accepting the payment or you know cancel so then the next fight here you can see we're offered 710 gold again but this time the Myrmidon is stronger he's doing eight damage now he has more HP and we're also doing less damage to him and but this time he's giving 62 experience almost double of what the last guy gave but you know we get the opportunity to check out the forecast and see do we have a chance of winning here and we technically do because Julian will attack first and he forces Four shots the opponent however Julian gets four shot in return but Julian goes first so as long as we hit all four of those attacks in a row we win the fight but you got to look at our hit chance at 86 so you know we'll win but it's a little risky if we miss one attack we're dead and we'll just have to we can still exit by pressing B and we'll just forfeit our gold and without any, getting the experience but we're gonna go ahead and accept this though because I have a good feeling that the 86 six won't miss any times so they're just going to trade back and forth but since julian went first he'll get that fourth strike first and win the fight and look at all that experience he gets and a good level up but now that we have two fights won now this is our third fight our payment has increased to 750 gold and our opponent has gotten a lot stronger but look at that experience he's giving 88 experience almost a full level up but you look at the combat and it's not good there's no chance julian has a shot at winning this he gets two shots the opponent gets seven shots and we really don't even have an advantage on the hit chances either we cannot win this so we have to just 
exit out and try somebody else. So here I got Bonsu all jacked up with some shards. And the funny thing about Bonsu is that in the training grounds, I don't think it's like taking into account his the shard bonuses or his bonuses from the Firestone. So his like his base stats are very low. And I think that's what they're basing the opponents here off of because I mean, as you can see, and like this guy's throwing a level one barbarian at us that has 19 hit points. He's only doing one damage, 76 hit rate, but he's still giving 33 experience and it's only 260 gold. I mean, and as you can see the combat forecast, like, I mean, Bontu just like, just destroys this guy. So we're obviously going to take this fight. I mean, it's a one shot and we still get good experience for that. So let's see what he's gonna throw at us next. We got a level three fighter for 260 gold still. And again, I mean, it's a one shot. We don't double this guy, but we don't need to because we just hit once and we kill him. I mean, there's just no risk here at all. And we get 60 experience now. So, I mean, there's really no reason not to take this and we win the fight. But now, I mean, there's really no reason to do this though, because Bontu's level ups are going to be terrible, but we can at least try, I guess. So now we got a considerably stronger enemy here, 270 gold to fight this level four mercenary with a steel sword. And we don't actually one shot this guy. We two shot him, just barely don't get the one shot. And we get three shots. We have an 84 hit rate. So this is actually, this third fight here is actually a little risky because if we miss once, we're probably dead, but 85 experience though, I mean, it's really tempting. I'm gonna go for it. And we got the two shot and killed him. And look at that, a disappointing bond to level up. If he's gonna get one stat every time, at least strength is a good one to get. So now the fourth fight here, 280 gold to fight a mage with a Thoron spell. So look at that, like this level seven mage, I mean, all of those stats you can see, the 19 might, 100 hit, 13 crit. I mean, that's all just coming from the Thoron spell. I mean, that they're not playing any games anymore with this stuff. This guy is tired of losing fighters. I mean, I guess he's not, I was gonna say losing money, but he's not really losing money since we're paying him and he's not giving any back, but he is losing his fight though so we can see here we still are just shy well I mean not just shy but we don't get the one shot it's a two shot but look at that experience though 100 he's giving us this guy's gonna give us a full level up if we can beat him and we also get two shots and the hit rate and even the crit rate is in favor of the opponent here 13 crit is pretty scary but I say we have we got to go for it and we don't get crit and we get the two hits to kill the mage and literally a full level up and Bonsu gets HP. So now we're at the fifth fight now. We're gonna pay only still only 290, which is I mean very low to fight this level seven mercenary with a silver sword. We still have a two shot both ways, and still the enemy only advantages in the hit rate department and crit still too. So I mean we gotta go for it as long as we can hit two attacks in a row at 80%, and we get another win for or Bontu and he gets HP again. All right, now for the sixth fight, they send a knight at us with a silver lance and you look at the combat forecast and this is the win if we hit all three attacks because yes, we get two shot and we need to three shot the opponent, but we go first. So you got to play this out in your head a little bit. We go first, we'll do 13. He'll do 15 back to us, but then we'll get 13 times two, which will kill him. So as long as those three attacks hit, we win. So let's do it. We hit the first one, hit back, and we get the next two, and that kills him. We get another full level up, HP once again. No surprise really for Bontu. And let's look at our seventh fight here for Bontu. And it's another knight with Silver Lance. Now this one is, if you can just look at the forecast and you should be able to see that this is a loss. I mean, there's really no way. I mean, unless a 98% from the enemy misses, we can't win this because we'll do 11 and then we'll do, we'll get hit. We'll, we'll be down to the 12 HP. We'll do 22 then, and he'll be left with two HP and then he'll get his second attack on us and kill us. So this one's a loss. 
It was a good run for Bond too, but I guess it'll have to come to an end eventually. So we'll just back out. Not much we can do there. Was that worth it? I mean, probably not. All I was doing was just wasting his Firestone. So then skipping over Awakening, since arenas are not in that game, that brings us to Fates. And this is where arenas start to get more unique with each game. And traditional arenas are basically a thing of the past now. So in Fates, the arena is a facility in the my castle that you can get and it still works like you know you enter the arena and you will engage in combat however you do not win any gold or experience so in this game you enter the arena and you can bet on the resources that you have such as like the gems that are used for weapon forging so then you'll choose whatever resource you want and then for the first fight round one you're risking one of that resource to win two and then if you win you can go on to round two and you'll risk two of that resource to win four and i believe you can go all the way up to to three rounds because the arena can be leveled up to level three and like so if it's a level one arena you can only do one round if it's a level two arena you can do two rounds and a level three arena you can do three rounds but if you lose any of the rounds then you forfeit your winnings i believe and your initial one resource that you bet in the first place so i mean really all it is for is getting more resources that are needed for weapon forging or you you know that's what i would use it for although with like visiting other castles you can get a lot of resources that way as well so skipping over echo since there's no arenas in that game since it's a remake of fe2 the next game would then be fe16 and fe16 again has a pretty unique style of arena in this game there are tournaments in the training grounds part of the monastery and the tournament is different each month focusing on a specific weapon and there is a gold and item reward for winning every round of the tournament with there being kind of like a grand prize at the end it costs nothing to enter the tournament there are a total of five fights your unit will go through being there's round one round two then the quarterfinals the semifinals and the finals and you can heal up to two times per Per tournament in between rounds each one will heal 20 hp so you'll likely want to heal when you're very low on hp in the tournaments your unit's life is not at stake or anything and they're just really you know normal fights you know i mean there's nothing too special about this like if the grand prize is something that you'd be interested in then it's worth a shot it does use up one of your activity points and you do get a professor level experience afterwards as well and even after winning it the first time for that like grand prize item you can still do it more times but you'll get just the gold reward only not additional items and now in fe 17 the most recent fire emblem game the arena is part of the somniel there are two types of of battles there's the standard battle or an emblem battle the standard battle can be done three times in between like map battles so whether it be like a chapter that you just got done doing or just a skirmish you know once you come back to the somnial after like a battle like that you can do the standard training for three times so in the standard training you choose a unit and they will be put up against a random ally or emblem and whether that unit wins or loses their life is not at stake and they'll still gain experience no matter the outcome so it's just free experience use it however you want if that unit that you chose is fighting against an ally they will gain support points if they have a support and if an emblem is fought then you'll build bond level with that emblem then there is emblem training and with emblem training you can choose a unit to fight against an emblem and no matter the outcome you'll just gain bond level with that emblem and this can be done as many times as you want as long as you have the bond fragments for it it will cost a certain amount of bond fragments to reach whatever bond level you desire with that emblem and starting from update one 
1.3 of the game, you can access the skill inheritance menu from the arena, since that is kind of the whole point of doing the emblem training so that you can get your bond level up with the emblem and inherit those skills that you want. From before this update, you had to exit the arena and go back to the ring chamber to like check on your inheritable skills and stuff like that. And it was a whole lot of back and forth and going through loading screens each time. And it was just a real pain and just cost it a lot of extra time for no reason. So very needed update that was. And there are also stuff similar to arenas in some of the spinoffs like the Warriors games and Heroes as well. But I really don't want to go over them. I just wanted to kind of tackle how arenas work in the main entries of the series. So let me know what you think of arenas in the comments. I think arenas are pretty good for the most part. I'm more of a fan of the traditional arenas that you can just find on certain maps like in the GBA games. I'm just a huge fan of them. I think they can be just fun and exciting, you know, if you want to try them out. So with all that said, this is the end of the video. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, and have a great rest of your day.